Hello, everyone. Welcome to the March 6, 2013 webinar on how to effectively segment your sugar CRM database. My name is Josh Bailey, and it's a beautiful day today in Chardon, Ohio, where E2B Technologies is located. Uh, E2B Technologies is a certified reseller of sugar CRM, so we're pretty knowledgeable on the product, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit on how to break up your uh, contact database into different segments and really target your market communications. So with that, we will begin. Today's agenda, what we're going to run through is uh, we're going to start with the importance of why you would want to segment your uh, marketing messages to specific audiences. Then we're going to jump to how Sugar CRM segments your contact database. Then we're going to do an actual live demo and show you how to build a report and how to segment your database using the actual system. Then we're going to go to who E2B Technologies is, who we are as a company. And then at the end, I'll finish up with opening it up for uh, questions and I'll uh, kind of give a little summary on what we talked about today. So why target your message? The reasons for wanting to target a message at a specific audience seems pretty obvious at first. After all, the very nature of marketing and public relations is the desire to tailor messages at the specific audiences they're intended to reach. However, upon closer inspection, you will notice that there are not only inherent benefits to targeting your message, but there are even dangers to not targeting your message. Let's work through what Einstein might have called a thought experiment. Let's imagine you're a manufacturer of banners, buttons, signs, emblems, and such, and one of your primary customers are political campaigners. You have several of these customers that campaign for Republican candidates and several that campaign for Democrat candidates as well as other parties. Once a month, you have special promotions and discounts on certain products, and you promote these discounts by emailing your customers and prospects. However, the email you are sending has several pictures of sample products, and much of your email's text has somewhat of a political slant in it. So you wouldn't want to send your Republican campaigners an email with pictures of signs advertising Democrat candidates, and you wouldn't want to send your Democrats emails with a Republican bias. To get even more granular, let's say that at the beginning of every political season, the bulk of your campaign signs will represent four different Republican candidates and approximately four different Democrat candidates. In your emails, you want to not only send your audience a message that reflects their political party, but you would want it to reflect their candidate as well. So how would you do this? You would do this by keeping a database of all of your customers and prospects and within these contact records, you would have fields that log the person's political party, such as Democrat, Republican, Green Party, Communist, so have you. And you would have fields that log their voting trends, who they voted for in last elections, etc. By using a CRM system to keep track of all your contacts, preferences, habits, demographics, or any other criteria that you can think of, you can segment your contact database on these criteria, ensuring these people are receiving the message that they want to hear. So still, why target your message? Well, people pay attention to inf information they want to hear. This is obvious. To send someone a message that reflects their interests and wants, there is a much greater chance that they'll want to interact and engage with your business. On the reverse side, people will try to block you out if you bombard them with information that is not really relevant to them. This is an area where segmenting your audience becomes critical because for every one person who receives a message that they find irrelevant, that is one more potential opt-out. And every opt-out is one less person hearing anything from you at all permanently, even if it's future information that might pertain to them. So how does Sugar CRM segment your, your uh, contacts? Well, now to understand how Sugar CRM segments your contacts, it, 
you must first understand how sugar logs its contacts in its system. Like most CRM systems, sugar keeps its contacts broken into separate modules that are composed of several fields. Unlike many CRM systems, these fields can be completely customized and added as you wish. You can add as many fields as you want. There are several types of fields you can create in Sugar. Um, and they can be displayed with any criteria you, you want. And uh, you can also put them in the layout exactly how you want as well. Uh, some of the types of fields that you can create in Sugar are fields such as address fields, checkboxes, currency, date, drop down menus, multi selects. You can even put an HTML code into a field, uh, an iframe, an image, a URL that clicks and opens to a new window outside of your CRM system, and plenty more options as well. To segment this specific information into targeted lists that can be individually marketed to, Sugar CRM uses its reporting capabilities. Reports can segment any information from any module and any field custom made or out of the box. No matter how complex your criteria or how customized your modules, Sugar will segment your database exactly how you specify, leaving you with target lists that contain highly niched and segmented results. So now with that, we will walk through exactly how to build a report from within Sugar CRM. For this report, we will be segmenting for all of our active Sugar CRM customers and prospects in Ohio, uh, pulling out their names, city locations, emails. So this is Sugar CRM. We land here on the dashboard. And to build a report, we would hover over more and click on reports. From here, you can go to create report. So as before mentioned, we're going to want to create a report that uh, pulls out all of our Sugar CRM customers and prospects in Ohio that have an active contact. Uh, and we're going to grab their names, city locations, and uh, we can grab emails. But for the sake of protecting the privacy of these contacts of ours, we will not be doing that. So this is going to be a normal rows and columns report. And it's going to be based off of contacts. So here's the report back end. And we can start pulling in fields from our contacts module to filter on. So we're going to want to grab down here the person's status and make sure that we're looking for people, contacts with a status that is active. Then we're going to want to grab contacts that are associated to an account. And then we're going to look for their account type. We have the ability of filtering on these as far as is, is not, is one of, is not one of, is empty, and is not empty. For this, we want is one of. And we're going to grab customers, partners, and prospects. Then we're going to go to email addresses and pull email addresses that are not empty. You know, with a large CRM system, it's quite possible that you get, you know, an empty email address or two in there, and you don't want to be able to pull those in. Then we're going to go back up to account, and we're going to look for customers, prospects, partners that are located in Ohio. So we're going to go to the main address state equals OH for Ohio. 
All right, now we're going to want to pull all these customers that have a product interest or currently own Sugar CRM. So we would do that by adding a filter group underneath this group. We would change this to or, and we would pull an account opportunity, go to accounts, down to opportunity. We're going to have their product interest, add this to the second filter, 1.2. Their product interest will be Sugar CRM. Then we're going to go back up to accounts and the CRM products that they own could also be Sugar CRM. So what this is doing is this is going in the system and looking for all contacts that are active. And these contacts are also either a customer, partner, or prospect. Their email is not empty, and they are, their business currently resides in Ohio. And these are all and, so all of these have to match up. All these filters at the top have to match up under the and filter. Down here you have the or. So that means that they are either tied to an opportunity, which product interest is Sugar CRM, or they're an existing account, such as a customer that currently owns Sugar CRM. These both don't have to be in order for the report to work. It's just looking for either one of these in order for it to pull and filter that in. So after picking your filter criteria, you would then go to Next, and it'll ask you to choose your display columns. For this, we're going to want to see the contact name. And also the contact's primary address city. Because we want to see what city they're located in. Uh, usually, we would also pull the emails of these contacts, as I mentioned. But for the sake of this broadcast and demo, we'll keep those hidden to protect the privacy of our contacts. So then we'll go to next. And then we give the report a name. We'll call this Sugar CRM Customers and Prospects in Ohio. We'll check these because these are the related modules to the report. And then just even run. And here it is. You see it's pulled 43 contacts and their locations. Uh, if we want to put email in here or really any other criteria or fields that we've built into the system for these contacts, we could choose to display here. And then what we would do is if we want to market a very particular targeted message towards these people, um, we built a target list pretty much right here. We would then go into the target lists module and create a target list for sugar customers and prospects in Ohio. And you can pull um, target lists from your reports. So then we would just pull this report that we just created into that target list, and that's what we would use for you know our email campaigns, direct mail campaigns, so on and so forth. So essentially, in Sugar CRM, when you're building a target list, you're doing that through your reports and through the filters in those reports it's by pulling it all information, uh, custom or out of the box fields that you've built into your contacts or account modules. All right, so that pretty much concludes the webinar. A little bit about us. Uh, we develop business-to-business -business solutions for the cloud, and we also resell ERP and, obviously, CRM software. 
Uh, some of our internally developed applications include Anytime Collect, the accounts receivable collection software, Anytime Commerce, which is a B2B e-commerce storefront, Anytime Supply Chain, which is a uh, sales forecasting MRP software, Anytime Assets, a cloud-based asset management database software, and we also make a few more as well. Some of the software that we resell is Epicor 9, which is an ERP, uh, Intact Financials ERP, Sage 500 ERP, and as you know, Sugar CRM. So a little recap of today's webinar. Um, we learned today that segmenting your CRM database is crucial and it allows you to give contacts the information that they want to hear while increasing interaction with your company and reducing the number of opt-outs with your communications. This can be achieved quite easily with Sugar CRM, which provides the ability to create highly customizable fields, all of which can be reported on. Your target list can be built off your reports, giving you the targeted contacts you need and the information about those contacts needed to send them messages that they want to hear. So that is the end of our webinar today. My name is Josh Bailey. If you want to give me a call, uh, send me an email, learn more about Sugar CRM and what it can do for your company, please do so. My contact information is there at the bottom. And I want to thank you for coming back to the webinar today. I don't see any questions here in the box. And I'll wait a few seconds in case you're still typing some in. That looks like it. All right. Thanks a lot for coming out, everyone. Take care.